Hello and welcome back to the channel of nonsense, thinly veiled car reviews, etc, etc. Now last year, you might remember, I reviewed the Mercedes S-Class luxury limousine thing. I thought, it feels like a bit of a dinosaur and that it should be an electric car. Well, thankfully, someone high up at Mercedes watches the channel of nonsense. They've knocked together this just for me. This is the EQS and it's Mercedes' most important car in forever. Let's go. It's huge, isn't it? It's huge, it's expensive, it's very high-tech, and it's got a mahoosive battery. But anyway, yeah, the EQS here in the UK starts at 102 grand. This one's a luxury trim, which is uh, designed to appeal more to traditional older Mercedes owners. There's also sporty AMG line versions. But anyway, this one's 109,000 pounds, so it gets big 22-inch wheels. It gets a rose gold key, actually, as well. I don't know why, but the luxury version, they think, oh, well, the older Mercedes buyer want that. I mean, I want that, and I'm a young Mercedes buyer, uh, except I've never bought Mercedes. But anyway, yeah, this is a technical tour de force. It's got a massive battery, bigger than pretty much anything else. It's 108 kilowatt hours, so it'll do 453 miles on paper. It'll do more like 400 in the real world. It can charge at 200 kilowatts on a DC fast charger, which will get it from 10 to 80% battery charge in half an hour and that can do 186 miles of charge in a quarter of an hour. That's ridiculous. This one is the single motor EQS 450 plus, so it's 333 horsepower on the back axle only. It does not to 62 in 6.2 seconds, so it's not that old rapido. There is a dual motor version, the EQS 580, which does not to 60 in 4.3 seconds, so it's faster, but it loses 30 miles of range. But anyway, that's all the boring stuff. Let's talk about the way it looks. I think, this is one of those cars that looks very different in reality to in press releases and all those media photos because this is a normal spec one. It hasn't got any ridiculous triangles and stars all over it. So it's all done for aerodynamics, all this kind of closed off grill. Uh, two Mercedes badges there, just in case you forget who makes your cars. I said 22 inch wheels. It's on air suspension. We should probably talk about the size because it's 5.2 meters long. It's one of the longest cars I've ever driven. It's ridiculous. It's got a 3.2 meter wheelbase. That's the space between the front and back wheels, which is as long as the long wheelbase version of the S-Class. This weighs two and a half tons, so it is one heavy mofo, and it has rear axle steering as well. There are two versions of the rear axle steering. One will turn the rear wheels four and a half degrees in either direction. This one's got the advanced system, which does 10 degrees. So it's got quite a large rear steer, and you have to be a little bit careful because you can curb the rear wheels if you park it next to a curb and yank steering wheel without really paying attention to what you're doing. At the back, got the light bar. I think, again, Mercedes design these days falls apart at the back a little bit. It's a little bit bland, a little bit, uh, what's the word, forgettable. In here, you have got a whopping boot. It's 610 litres. Uh, yeah, loads and loads of room there. And under here, you've got a big old space for your cables for home charging, your locking wheel nuts. It goes down almost to the floor. And obviously, this is on Mercedes's latest EVA, I think it's called architecture. So it's designed from the wheels up as an electric car. So it's got a flat floor with the big battery pack underneath. And uh, I've locked it, so hang on. Journalism error 101. And I need to lock it, then unlock it. There we go, look, the back seats. Cavernous, cavernous, like an S-Class. Loads and loads of legroom. Nice flat floor, no centered tunnel. That's been banished to the old internal combustion engine fire pit in the sky. I'm gonna hop in, but first of all, just look at all of this wood, this leather, the Burmester stereo, the heated seat buttons. Yeah, I mean, this open pour walnut does slightly give me the horn, but anyway, I'm gonna jump in. Yeah, I don't know how many people are actually gonna buy the EQS as a family car, because it's got that executive vibe to it, but I hope they do, because your kids have got so much room in here. That is in my driving position. And I have got loads of room for my knees. Space under the seat is a little bit tight for my boots, but I can't complain, really. And I've got Mercedes's infamous pillowy headrest, so I could just crawl back here while it's on charge and zonk out, frankly. I don't feel claustrophobic. I've got massive two-part panoramic sunroof. Life is very, very good back here. Got isofix points down there. Uh, ambient lighting, which we'll get onto because it actually serves a purpose. It goes all the way around the cabin, if you can see that. And when you've got the lane departure and blind spot warning stuff on, it flashes red 
on the left or right, depending on whether there's something in your blind spot. It's kind of a subconscious thing to help you not crash. But anyway, I've given you a little glimpse of the interior. I'm going to take the filter off my camera because the big screen doesn't like it and show you what's going to take about 10 minutes to show you because it's all technology up there. It's like a branch of well, we don't have any technology stores anymore. But anyway, let's go. Right, we're gonna talk about the infotainment in about two minutes time. But firstly, just look at this cabin, beautiful round steering wheel. There are two different types of steering wheel you can get on the EQS, depending on which trim you get. Yeah, but this is round, lovely, covered in capacitive buttons, which actually work really well. You've got a big 12-ish inch driver's display there and a big 12.8, I think, inch screen here. You might be thinking, isn't the EQS the car with the weird 1.4 meter wide hyper screen thing? Yes, but this hasn't got it because it's an 8,000 pound option. I don't know who's really gonna buy it other than press fleets to show it off, but obviously Mercedes UK expect this uh, without too many options, without any options actually. So yeah, I actually don't mind because you get this huge slab of walnut there with these silver stripes through it like a Savile Row suit. It's got air vents which are actually plastic when you scrape your finger around the turbines, but they look nice. Door controls, seat controls, etc. You've got big wireless charger down there, an NFT pad, a thing to charge the key, cup holders. You've got pretty much everything and you've got a sunblind control up there for the sunroof, which is gesture based but you don't need to use it because you can say, hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Close the sun blind. I'm closing the roller sun blind on the sliding sunroof. Thanks. Yeah, it's got lots of voice command stuff. But anyway, enough about in with your profile. No, you're talking, no, you're talking too much now. Right, I'm gonna take filter off and show you all of this stuff. Yeah, this is the same screen that you get in the latest S-Class. So it's based on Mercedes's MBUX operating system. And it's all profile based. So you have to log in using your fingerprint down here, or you can tap a pin in, or you can get it to recognize your face, like an iPhone's face ID. I know Android did that first, but whatever. Um, yeah, so the idea is that all the settings you set up in this are saved to your Mercedes profile. So your ambient lighting, your seating position, etc. So if you ever rent a Mercedes or borrow someone else's, you can log in, and it'll move your seat for you. Isn't that the future? Um, there's loads and loads of stuff you can do through here. Also, it's got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but the settings for everything, look, so you can change the sound experience, which is the noise the car makes. Silver Waves makes it sound like a V8, like an AMG when you boot it. Uh, Vivid, Flu oh, Vivid Flux makes it sound like a slightly cheesy spaceship. I prefer Silver Waves but you can just turn that off if you want it to not make any noise whatsoever. It will raise the suspension based on GPS if it knows you're going off road or into a car park. There's all sorts of comfort features, lights. I, you can obviously change the ambient lighting to have uh, some different color schemes. I like multicolor, please. I want this electric pattern. There is so much stuff in here. One of my favorite things though, which is actually quite useful if I can find it in apps, there's an office function. There's also Tetris, but in car office, you can sync your Gmail calendar to it or your Office 365 calendar. And you can ask the car to add things using your voice to your calendar. I've not done it yet, but you can set up your email and calendars and everything. I just think that's really cool. If you're a business person that likes to, you know, work from your car, this is just perfect for it. All the electric stuff shows you state of charge. On here in the bottom left, it shows you your range. 342 miles and it says max 373 so i will get 373 only if i turn off all the air conditioning and everything else otherwise i'll get 342 so it's got a realistic range readout as well i mean you could play with this for days and days there's all sorts of other things as well um yeah this one i think it's only got the basic seats it has got some vague massage thing but it hasn't got the full massage seats i don't think yeah uh you could get lost in there for hours and hours this car also has built-in dash cams front and rear, but you need to plug a USB stick in if you want to record the footage from that. And also it's got active noise cancelling from the hi-fi. So it listens to what's happening on the outside and plays the opposite noise to the inside, which adds to the sense of silence and luxury. Right, I think I've rattled through all that. I haven't even talked about the head-up display, which you're not gonna be able to see, but basically Mercedes for a few years has had augmented reality 
sat nav on here. So when you get up to a junction, it shows you a camera view off the front of the car with arrows saying point this way or that way or that way or that way. Uh, but it does that in the head up display as well now. So it shows you where you need to go in the windscreen with arrows pointing at junctions as you come up to them. It's cleverer than I've just made it sound. Right, sorry that's gone on so long. There's just so much stuff to talk about on this car. It's a little bit ridiculous. I'm gonna go for a drive over the next few days and I'll come back and report on that uh, on Monday. You don't know what day it is today, but yeah. I'll come back on Monday to film a driving bit once I've used it as a family car, once I've done some errands in it and tried living with a 5.2 meter long car in a small British town. That's going to be fun. So I will see you then. Right, it's Monday morning. This goes back in a couple of hours. I've been driving it around over the weekend with the kids and everyone in it, using it as a very expensive electric family car. Um, so I want to go for a drive. I'm just going to put my pin in to unlock all the My Account stuff. Uh, you can get it to recognise your face, or as I said, you can use your fingerprint on there. I've come to a car park because this is the size of a small oil tanker, but the rear wheel steering is the best I've ever used. This 10 degree system on this car means I can get out of that space basically into two spaces over, which is ridiculous for a car of this size. Now I'm going to head out on some dual carriageways, do some 70 mile an hour stuff and some twisty road stuff, and I'll tell you what this is like but now I need to fetch the GoPro. I've just done that rear wheel steer thing on. Holy continuity, Batman, there's a GoPro there suddenly. But anyway, uh, around town, as you might have guessed, this is actually pretty easy to drive considering it's absolutely massive, helped mostly by that rear wheel steer, but also the visibility out apart from over your shoulder is really quite good. Now, it is a cold, dewy morning. It's about 8 a.m. in March, and that rear window is not clearing very quickly at all. I often find this is the case with EVs. They put preheaters on them and let you preheat them from apps and things for a reason. Because there's no engine generating lots of heat, it just feels like the electric heaters take longer to work. Yeah, that rear window is just not really clearing. I've got no rear wiper, which is a sin in my book. I know saloons look rubbish with rear wipers, but I would like to see one. Anyway, around town, yeah, the ride is mostly really good it's very costing the air suspension does a good job if you just leave it alone to iron out most bumps however it's two and a half ton tank so there's only so much it can do you will still feel bumps in the road like this one almost a bit crashy over that and one weird thing when you open the door and hop in your feet don't go as low as you think because there's batteries under the whole floor of the car your feet actually are a bit higher than you think when you jump in it's not an suv or anything but there's just less depth to the footwell than you might think. Hmm, right. Um, let's go and stop saying let's go. Right, enough of that. Let's get to a dual carriageway because I want to test out the double glazing and talk about acoustics at 70 miles an hour because that's my life now. As a wise man did once say, I'm about to go from a 50 limit into a 70, but I've got a little corner in the way first and it's tightening my seatbelts because it thinks I'm crashing despite the fact it got through there with no palaver at all. Right, up to 70, I've got some fake burble of electricness there. So that's 70 miles an hour and it's pretty quiet. It is pretty quiet. It's not the quietest thing I've been in down here. That was something I reviewed earlier this year. I can't remember what. But yeah, I got tire noise more than anything else, but it's not deafening. And you can absolutely have a lovely conversation about how your stocks are doing or the price of oil. It's all, it's all pretty hushed. One thing I do like about this, which is not unique to this car, is it has got level one autonomy. So I can press a button here on the old cruise control and as well as getting my speed up to whatever the speed limit is, you can make it go faster than the speed limit should you want to. But yeah, it keeps you in your lane. It does the steering up to a certain extent for you. And you just have to keep a hand on the wheel. And it does just make this a very relaxing mile muncher. And that is what this feels like. It feels like a long distance cruiser in like the form of an S-Class, that kind of thing, but electric. Uh, I've still got 300 miles of range and the battery's uh, three quarters full. Most EVs, if you had three quarters of a battery, it'd be about 150 miles. So yeah, this is doubly good as other EVs are that stuff. But yeah, I'm enjoying my mood lighting. My ambiance is nice. If I paid a bit more, I could be having a massage right now, but I didn't, or Mercedes-Benz press office didn't. 
Yeah, what a what an imperious thing for crushing electric miles. Now, obviously, you still have to charge it, um, but you know, future problems. Anyway, I'm about to get to a twisty road, and we'll see if two and a half tons feels like two and a half tons on a twisty road, and if it does that seatbelt tightening uh, Fifty Shades of Grey bondage thing again. Hopefully, it won't. That wasn't very pleasant. Okie dokie, right, I'm coming up to my twisty road of judgment. But first of all, I'm just going to come to a gentle stop, which is easy to do because the brake pedal is very easy to modulate and it's all show free. And I'm just going to boot it from naught to 50. And I've got future noises, that's 50. So yeah, two and a half tons, 330 horsepower. Performance is adequate rather than startling, but you've always got that immediate electric thrust when you're in the mid-range and you boot it. So actually, it feels quick enough. I don't think you need to go out and spunk a load more money on the dual motor version. It's a show it some corners. Ugh, I hate myself saying that. I'm gonna have to wash myself with carbolic when I get home. Uh, yes, it goes around corners and it stays level at 50 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour. It is, it's fine. I'm not getting any feedback. The steering's kind of unnaturally weighty in sport mode, but what do you expect? It's a two and a half ton electric saloon car. But yeah, you can go down a country road, keeping up with stuff if you're a bit brave. When you really push it into corners, obviously you do get a little bit of understeer. You can't really get any oversteer histrionics out of it, unless you turn everything off, I'd imagine. And I'm not even sure you can or would want to because heavy cars and instant torque aren't necessarily the best bedfellows. It's okay. It's not an engaging car to drive and it thinks you're going to crash all the time when you turn in too hard and make the front tires push wide. Yeah, the brakes, the brakes are adequate. <laughs> the brakes are adequate. And what I mean by that is you need to push them a bit harder than you think. When I first got in this, I nearly went to the back of someone coming up to a national speed limit roundabout because I forgot this weighed two and a half tons <laughs> and the brakes don't forget that. It takes some stopping is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, that's probably enough waffle about how this drives. I'm gonna go and find a little village green to do an outro. I'll see you in a minute. Right, shaky cam conclusion time. What do I think of the Mercedes EQS after living with it for a couple of days? It's magnificent, frankly. It is lovely that Mercedes has really cracked this whole luxury electric car thing on its first go really and i know it's horrifically expensive and some of the options are as well such as that eight thousand pound willy waving screen however the s class always had a reputation for having technology that dripped down into the e class and the c class and hopefully this is the start of that but in electric form so maybe in four years time a c class will have 400 miles of electric range which would be phenomenal because that will really democratize electric driving blah 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 but yeah otherwise this is great to drive the interior is beautiful it's nice and hushed it is heavy and you do sense that when you try to drive it sportily but why would you? And I know the looks are a bit divisive. Some people like them, some people hate them. I think it looks a little bit bland in this color scheme. I'd be a bit bolder if I was gonna buy one of these. But anyway, magnificent thing. If I gave out roadie stars, this would be getting four and a half out of five roadie stars, but I don't. So it doesn't get them, sorry Mercedes. Anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, please hit like. If you've bought one of these, tell me in the comments. And if you haven't bought one of these, leave me a comment telling me why not. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching. Do subscribe and goodbye from my nice dewy cricket pitch.